Welcome to Turn-Based Memories, episode 21. I will be your host. My name is Mel, and in this show, my co-host Zoltan and I will discuss Diablo 3, which is a little out of the norm for this channel, I admit, where we usually cover JRPGs, but sometimes we like to color a little outside of the lines. Zoltan has played Diablo 3 for the first time, and I played it back at launch. And this show is all about comparing old experiences with new ones. First, a very quick rundown of the game we're discussing. Diablo 3 was made by Blizzard not long after their acquisition by Activision, and released first on PC in 2012. It's an isometric loot-based game with randomized items, randomized world layout, and a strong emphasis on replayability. We'll discuss this later in the episode, but Diablo 3 launched with a good deal of controversy regarding its always online requirements and the infamous auction houses, which would later be removed from the game entirely. In my time with Diablo 3, I put in somewhere north of 300 hours, playing through every campaign and then onto the game's adventure mode at all then available difficulty levels. It's been a good three years or so since I booted the game up, but we're not talking about ancient history. This is a game I played to the point where I truly never want to pick it up again, which is quite rare for me these days. I seldom play a game so thoroughly that I feel I'm simply done with it. Zoltan has chosen to play the PS3 version of the game, which to my understanding is quite different from the PC original. Controller-oriented gameplay aside, I believe there are a few balancing and content changes made to this version of the game that I'm looking forward to discussing with Zoltan. Coming up in our discussion will be comparisons of our experiences, and some further talk about the history of this game's long and troubled development. Zoltan isn't a total newcomer to the series, or at least the concepts of the series, having played the very first Diablo back on the PlayStation 1. So stay a while, listen a little longer, and enjoy Zoltan and I talking a bit about Diablo 3. Thank you. Hello and welcome to what we have just discovered is episode 21. <laughs> yes, it is. Turn-based memories. This episode is all about Diablo 3 and I am... No, that's my name, and my co-host name is Zoltan. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. Yes, of course. Uh, so the format of the show, as you would have heard if you listened to the introduction, is that uh, this is Zoltan's first time having played Diablo 3, and I have played it some time ago. And uh, we're going to get into the discussion portion of it now. I'll have already introduced the game and the basics of it. Mm. So right now I have a, a line of questioning for uh, Zoltan having just uh, completed this game. And we're going to get into what exactly that means. So what difficulty uh, you played the campaign yes. on what hardware? The PlayStation 4, not pro, right. but slim. Yeah. Right, so we're talking the console version yeah. of Diablo 3. Now, my experience, as I've said, is the PC version. And um, so you played the campaign. What difficulty did you play? Did you change the difficulty at all? Did you play on normal? Um, I guess before we mention difficulty, I should mention that this is the version called, what is it, Reaper of Souls Edition or something, which came out. Right. A little bit later, after they made a bunch of updates, after people complained about stuff or something. There are a lot of updates that have been applied to the game over time. Okay. So you're playing, essentially, you're playing the latest version. They stopped development on the game a few years back. Like, they haven't added... I'm sure they've done minor fixes and whatever, but they haven't added any content or updates to the game okay. in a few years. 
All right. And yeah, uh, and I played on normal normal mode. I looked at hard mode and it said mm-hmm. in the description that uh it's for people who already players who already have some solid equipment, which means right. you need to have already played the game once on normal mode, right? So I didn't touch that. Went straight just through on normal mode. I didn't check out any of the millions of different play styles available on the freaking main menu like mm. adventurer mode i didn't even check them out sorry adventurer mode season taking taking part in the season right whatever so that there is. are seasons yeah, yeah. Uh, no co-op either i played completely solo mm. right uh so you basically played like the the straightforward this is the standard diablo experience this is probably close to the diablo experience that a lot of people would have had originally with the older titles which i guess brings me to my next question you have played what the original diablo i played diablo 1 on ps1 i did not PS1. play diablo 2 though so this experience in terms of the type of content you play should be fairly similar you played the campaign yeah. on probably the baseline difficulty normally start yeah. to finish that's right. right. Yeah, it was. Ba- it's. It reminded me completely of Diablo One, like just right. with a few, you know, with some extra systems added in. But overall, basically the exact same thing as what my feeling was. Got it. Now, for my own curiosity, I've never played the uh, console versions of this game. I was tempted to buy one of the versions of it, only because it does play very differently from the pc version you have like a dodge roll in this game for yourself right yeah you don't have that in pc nope not even a little bit the funny thing is i never wanted to use the dodge roll but yeah uh, it exists um got it well what is, so, why do you think that is i don't know why they would do that then they adapted it so i can't you didn't have a dodge roll in the ps1 Diablo one, did you? No, it was like right. an RPG and nothing else, basically. Right, yeah. yeah. So I think what they did for the console versions of this game is they tried to fit it more into the mold of modern console games where you have direct control over your character and away from the sort of point-and-click isometric PC game that it was based on. Mm. And the PC version plays identically to the other PC entries in the series where you click and your character walks from where they are to where you click. You don't yeah. have direct control like with WASD or the arrow keys of your character at all. You point oh. and click and tell them where to go. Okay. And then you right click on things or you directly left click on things and then you press different skill buttons to do whatever your skills are. Um, that's the and same. that is a hmm. big challenge in the way you're because you can accidentally pass your character into an attack or like through fire on the ground and <laughs> stuff like that, and it becomes a challenge to make sure you're not like you know tunnel visioning and walking into an enemy attack or some big fire thing on the ground. I've died hmm. many times. <laughs> you wonder how that. many times so I died. Careful. Uh, I'm gonna say, did you die zero times? I died zero times, yo. This game yeah. was unbelievably easy. Right. Which so fun. yeah, you started playing it, uh, or you told me you had started playing it, and then within like a couple of days, you're like, I beat it, dude. And yeah. I was like, oh. Not a couple of days, but yeah, <laughs> pretty quickly, yeah. Pretty quickly, like I guess a week. Uh, so right, the normal difficulty in this game really is designed as like. I don't know, I guess the tutorial almost, where they're trying to introduce you to most of the systems in the game. And then it's up to the hard modes and on, and there are many difficulties. Yeah, there are a lot of difficulties, right. Right, to sort of hone your... Do you actually know how to engage with the mechanics of this boss fight or how to deal with the phase switching of whatever the attack pattern is or okay here's an, uh, a group of enemies they have this this and this affix which are the special abilities that the elite enemies have mm. um, 
and depending on the combination of abilities they have may inform your strategy pretty strongly on what abilities you use or stuff like that. Okay, dude, uh, dude, you're talking all around my head because what I played, there's no strategies, yo. So I guess right. um, if that was the purpose of normal mode, if, if, it, if the purpose of it really was to prepare you for hard mode, which I, mean, I don't know if it is or not, but... If that's the purpose of it, and there's and when you get to hard mode, there's going to be strategies and being careful about what bosses do. I'm not ready then, yo, because <laughs> seriously, like the the perfect balance, the the game where the ba- I'm sorry, the part of the game where the balance was best, which is I guess probably the case in most games, is the very beginning, um, where you'd walk out into whatever the next dungeon or uh, aggressive area is, and you'd fight uh-huh. and you'd start getting beaten down a little bit you're like oh god what's gonna happen to me okay i better go back one time and heal up or whatever see if i can sure use some of this money to buy something better or whatever or or whatever and then go back out and see if i can go a little bit further and that's how the entire experience of diablo one was all the way to the end it's like you can only go in a little bit further than you did the previous time and then you got to go back because you're getting hammered you're running out of potions and stuff like that um right and yeah, and you want, you're hoping that the guy that sells the good the good stuff sells really because the things in his shop are randomly generated. You're hoping there's going to be something amazing in there that you can take to go really far the next time. And but in this game, that feeling that well, not just the feeling that balance is over very early, um, uh, very early on normal pretty mode. quickly, huh? Yeah, so you, you felt like you were pretty much unbeatable. Completely um, unbeatable quickly. from before the halfway point, even. Okay, so would you say after Act One or Two, there was maybe still a little pushback from the enemies? Yeah, there was still some pushback from the enemies in the beginning of uh, Act Two. I'd I'd say, but uh-huh. it it like yeah, just me having to worry about dying when I move to a new area very quickly. Uh, Somewhere during Act Two, quickly became just a thing of the past. I mean, you you played up to five Act Five, right? Whatever the final act was, I think it was five. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So sometime during right. Act so Two, that's though, the last one. Yeah. Got it, it happened. And so um, I became literally hold the X button to win, guy. <laughs> like now literally. X was your primary attack, like your just melee exactly. attack or whatever. I mean, I used so all what, what, I used all the other things in my. Uh, uh, Arsenal, I did. I didn't what just use What class did button. you play? Yeah, I guess that's important, right? Um, yeah. Uh, the name of the archer. What's the name of the archer class in this game? Uh, the I should know this. I uh, the, <laughs> it's a fem- so I, many I, games that do this. I know what you're talking about. Everyone who knows Diablo 3 should know what we're talking about. It's like... Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's not assassin. Is it ranger no. or hunter? No. No, it's not that. It's like <laughs> marauder or something. Oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Raider. Uh, but anyway, mm-hmm. it's an archer. We know what we're talking about. There's a lot of their their primary stat is dex. That's the stat that you need to. Is that what what it was that I used? I th- Probably. I mean, you probably didn't have to pay attention to that. I think it just said attack, actually. I can't remember now. Yeah, but I mean... Well, they may have actually simplified the stats in the console version a bit. I'm not sure. That is possible. So they do a crazy thing. So I just mentioned, really, what I consider the only flaw in the game is how ridiculously easy it is and there is no strategy. Or there was none for what I did. Maybe I got unbelievably lucky with drops or something, but seriously just holding the x button and then you know the only reason to use all the other abilities that i have was to just kill things faster not because i was in trouble just because i want to hurry up and so because because i found myself in that position um i went into the menu and you know every button there's like so and the way it works in this game you have your playstation controller and the x button is your most basic attack and the square button does something, and the L1 does something, R2, R1 does something, and R2 does something, and circle does something. Like, there's several buttons. And each one, uh, you can set, like, one of five different attacks to each button. So that, so that means that... I'm sorry. And it's not necessarily that the last attack, which you get by going up levels to unlock, it's not necessarily that that one's way better than the first one, because you can level up the first one more, too, mm-hmm. as you go on. Mm-hmm. So you just choose the one you like. 
Um, so yeah. I tried them all out as I unlocked them. But in the end, uh, my favorites were a couple of the ones, a few of the ones that were pretty early. And I just centered all of my abilities on speed. Um, so like my triangle right. button ability was this just, it's called vault, I think, where you just flip yeah. forward really yep. fast. And because yep. I had that, I never needed to press the um, evade button. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. you can kind of see how the evade is sort of additional. Like all of the characters in this game have a way of evading attacks or defending or somehow mitigating damage or healing or whatever to the point where a dodge with like invincibility frames isn't really necessary because I guess they didn't really balance the combat around it. Um, I know they did tweaks to some of the skills that the characters have, but that evade move that you have uh, is very much like a dodge. Mm, So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see why you wouldn't need to use the built-in dodge. Yeah, no, I used the vault move instead. Yeah, right. Yeah, sorry, but Uh, you asked me a question before I went into all that. (laughs) Didn't you? (laughs) I probably did, but uh, (laughs) yeah, we were just going on about, you know, what class you picked. Uh, Did you try any of the other classes besides the archer hunter class? No, I I chose entirely on... uh, uh, well, I like bow and arrow just in general in games. Plus, sure. I, I went entirely on looks. And right. uh, on a personal taste uh, taste scale, do not enjoy the I do not enjoy the aesthetic of this game much at all. I wouldn't expect you would. It's very <laughs> grim and very uh, dark I color mean, palette wise. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I thought the areas looked cool enough, but I like sure. I'm flipping through the characters on the screen, and it, when you actually end up playing the game. Their appearance almost doesn't matter because you're zoomed kind of far back. You are zoomed pretty um, far out. Yeah. yeah. But when you're choosing a character, you're up close uh, on the character screen and you're looking at each one. And I did not care for the look of most of them. But uh, yes. I know, I, in the end, the one that I chose, I think, was the one that I thought looked the coolest. I chose a female archer. And, uh, you know, her. I don't think you can change their gender at all. You can change it, yo. Oh, you can? Oh, you're right. You yeah. can. Yeah, you can change it. Yeah, you're it. right. So I, I went, either, yeah, yeah, so I went with a female archer, and then uh, the clothes changed as you pick up armor. So I was happy about that because yes. I didn't care for the ones she was wearing uh, in the. In There's the also screen. dye. You can dye the armor different colors. That's right, which I did. I did that a little bit, which I want to say is that not like a very useless thing because it's very soon later that I'm going to be picking up better armor. Later on. Hmm. Especially at the higher difficulties, you <clears throat> stop churning through loot, like equipping upgrade after upgrade, uh, and you'll end up riding with the same loot for a very long time. Then it's uh, worth it, yeah. Then it's worth Not only can you <clears throat> die, but I don't know if you saw there's a... Uh, when you go into town, you have like a whole array of vendors that you can talk to, right? Yeah. And one of them... Uh, will let you change the appearance of your armor to look like other armor that you've picked up. Yeah, it's the same person who does the dyeing, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I spent a lot of time. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm sure you did too. So I, I spent did. a lot of time uh. and my character's money transmogrifying is what it's called. Right. Uh, my armor to look like other armor that looks cool. <laughs> same here. I to- I I did that one time too. I I changed all the colors and all the. Uh, the shape of all the pieces that I had. I'm like, yeah, now yep. she looks awesome. And then very shortly after, I picked up a new one, and yeah. I thought it would retain the appearance or something, but it didn't. So, no. <laughs> so she looked all like crap days. after that again for the basically the whole game. But whatever. It, I mean, yeah, I guess it's for... So that that's a thing that this game, uh, I guess, you know, should have should have done differently, I guess, is that... I mean, it's just weird that this is normal mode, you know, hard mode. It sounds like it sounds like it wasn't possible to play uh, right from the beginning with the new character. It, it says you need equipment. Been. Yeah, yeah. I know they gate some of the other difficulties off. Like you have to have gotten to a certain character level or something. Like you can't just dive in to whatever the to even the standard second one. difficulty. Yeah, it goes. You know, normal, hard, master 
something else. Demonic or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a couple stages of normal, I should it's kind of a hard, awkward way to put it, but normal difficulty levels. Okay. There go from like <clears throat> standard up to very hard basically. Right. And then beyond that when you uh do beat the game, it goes into these things called torment levels where Basically, you're just working off of numbers getting bigger. And then, the, as a consequence, the loot gets better by, like, a big factor. And the money that drops is way higher by a big factor. And it keeps, like, going up and up and up and up. Hmm. Um, and I believe last time I played, which by now was a couple of years ago, there were 13 or so torment levels on top of the max difficulty level that is oh, available to you. Oh, man. And it really gets quite crazy. You need to have, like, some of the best, not only the best loot, like, this sword in particular is legendary, whatever, but the type of stats on that sword or armor need to be, like, the best they can be. And you mm. also have to be pretty fucking good at the game, you know, <laughs> to to hang at the highest difficulty levels. Um, uh, are there also? I I'm just wondering. Are there also uh, like abilities uh, on weapons that are only available on harder difficulties and stuff? Is that a thing too? Yeah. So certain mm. legendary weapons and uh, pieces of armor will change the way your skills behave to a certain degree, or they'll give you these potent effects around your character, or they affect certain things. Like, when you block, this will happen. When you do a melee attack, that will happen. Mm, when you do okay. this skill, this will happen. <clears throat> you know, your your other skill will behave in a completely different way, especially set bonuses, which are, you know, getting every piece in a set of armor. Um, it could totally change the way you uh, use your moves because maybe it will eliminate or virtually eliminate the mana cost or resource cost of that skill. Or it will make it so strong you only need to really do it once or twice. Something mm. like that. Uh, or it could more dramatically change just like the way it works. Oh, wow. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So it, it can it gets pretty dramatic in terms of uh, how that changes with the legendary items. Did you find any uh, legendary items at all? Dude, there were lots Probably of not, them, right? yo. No, there were it lots did? of them. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. wow. Legendary belt, legendary bow, and the last piece Thanks. of... Uh, the last armor, I'm sorry, the last weapon I found was a legendary bow, which had uh, an ability on it that no other nice. thing I had. Uh, an ability I hadn't seen before, which was that, I don't know if you know, but the archer has this machine gun type of arrow ability. Do you know about it? Yeah. Yep, yeah. I do. So that, I think it's, maybe it's called multi-shot or something. And um, it, it had just like plus 250% that damage. <laughs> multi-shot. Yes. I'm like, are you serious? My freaking machine yep. gun arrow storm thing will be times 2.5 and like yeah i i obliterated everything after that i mean i was i was already no problem before that even but then it's, but it's just it's like, like but now it's just like i mean seriously literally the <laughs> final boss yo the final boss uh, is the hardest boss yeah, yeah, right yeah. is he not uh it's supposed to be harder than the ones before it sure yeah, yeah. i uh, mean i wouldn't say the hardest in the game like the hardest in the campaign, though, right? Sure, yeah. You're playing the campaign. It yeah, I don't know be... what goes beyond that, but yeah, in the campaign. Yeah. Literally didn't even try to run from his attacks. Just let him punch me in the face. And I and I just kept holding that freaking R2 button, and he died pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. He was over uh, all the time. <laughs> that's a lot of... It's very different from the way this game was when I played it. I played it at launch... And I, I played it for several years after, so I played all the way up to the latest content build and whatever. But by now, that's a, a few years ago. Um, my first legendary was not on normal mode, tell you that much. Huh. And I did die on normal mode. Probably not a lot, but in Act 1, to the poison that the trees dropped, those look like poison flowers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking that about. That does kind of a lot of damage. It's kind of easier to like, accidentally like, go, oh, I stepped in it for too long because it's, it's very quick to take effect. That's the first thing that killed me. And the first legendary I got, 
if I were to boot up my game, I still have it on my character, not on my character, but in my inventory. Yeah. Uh, and it was like a big deal back then. Mm. Whenever you got any legendary, because they were so fucking rare. Oh, uh, right. They should it be, doesn't I think. Mean they were good, though. Doesn't mean they were like good items, but they were like, oh, right. oh my God, like you actually got a legendary. I see. Uh, that type of thing. It's not uh, like that on. in normal mode in the campaign now, at least. I, I got so many, yo. <laughs> I believe they changed. Well, so... Uh, the uh, or is, it, is it possible that I'm making a mistake? Uh, you know, they all have the, the color coat, coating or whatever, um, like on their or it's legendary. picture. Yeah, it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure I had... Quite oh, a few did. orange ones. It only goes, it goes like white, actually it goes gray, white, then blue, yellow, then uh, legendary. Orange. Okay, yeah, so uh, maybe I'm oh, also thinking of some yellow ones too, but I had a few yeah. at least, a few for sure. Yeah, the Maybe. yellow, the, the epic or whatever it's called, um, is, those are what obviously what you're going to get a lot of before you get legendaries, but... Back in the day, that was what your sets were made out of, and then eventually you would get some legendaries, and it was probably pretty hard to get a full set of legendaries, although toward the end of it, I was able to, but again, mm -hmm. they made legendaries a lot more plentiful, and I'm now, sure the drop rates mm -hmm. and things are very different on console. They did fine-tune this game quite a bit on consoles. It's not exactly the same game. Mm. Um, when you played... A lot back then did you always play online i did so the console the sorry the pc version is an always online game oh that's right so you, you can't not play online even if you're just playing by yourself but i probably did put in a fair number of hours solo when i was like into the game like big time but toward the end of it it was all an excuse to like hang out online with my friends. Like mm. it was like a vehicle for catching up with your friends basically, because even when you are higher up on the difficulty levels, there is a lot of just churning through enemies. It's a little mindless and you're just kind of pulling the crank on the loot machine mm -hmm. and seeing what pops out and you're doing these runs and then maybe you're cashing that all in to do like a really big challenge run essentially is sort of how it works. So the mode you didn't touch the adventure mode is you could think of it like a remix mode. You yeah. start in any one of the towns that you were in. There's yeah. five towns in it, one town per act. And it doesn't really matter. What will happen is the game on your map will tell you, go here, do this. So you warp there, you kill the enemy you have to kill, or you, whatever it is, it tells you to do, rescue the person, whatever. Basically, you're going somewhere and killing a bunch of shit. And then you do it, and then you finish however many of those it tells you to do. You go back to town, and you open up a big chest, and a whole bunch of loot pops out. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things you get when you do that is a resource that lets you enter special challenge things called Nephilim Rifts. Okay. And these are like uh, dungeons that you start from A and go to B and there are a ton of enemies in there. There's no loot and the enemies are really hard. Like the enemies oh, don't wow. drop any loot. And I think there is money on the ground, but maybe not. I think there's like nothing on the ground if I'm remembering correctly. And it ends in a really big, like remixed boss fight. So it, it oh, could wow. be two bosses that you fought before simultaneously. Oh, or that's one boss awesome! That just, yeah, or one boss <laughs> that does like extra different attacks or whatever. Huh. And then when it dies, a shit ton of loot pops out, <laughs> and then you and get all the loot that you basically would have earned that entire time. Been, like, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. So that sounds yeah, like fun, and, actually you're graded like you get more rewards for doing it faster mm. and it shows you the break points in the timer if you beat it before here you're going to get the maximum reward if you beat it before here you're going to get a little less than that and so forth um 
And that is sort of a loot grind that you go on. And you're trying to get these sets that complement your character, that, you know, makes this or this or that attack super OP so that you can, whatever, blow shit up quick enough to do these Nephilim rifts and get the maximum reward. Man. And there were other (laughs) challenges beyond that, too, that I'm failing to remember with, like, even harder bosses and other things that I probably didn't do too much of. Um, But... I I played this game a fair amount. I think I put in north of 300 hours, probably, and oh, my nothing. friends put even more than that. Like, a couple of my like friends five. put in, uh, try like, over a, a thousand a or thousand. two thousand. A thousand? Oh, man. <laughs> like, a lot <clears throat> yeah. of time. And we played awesome. on hardcore mode. Which right. is you die once and your character is deleted. Deleted, yeah. <laughs> Which it sounds any loot that they're wearing. If the <sighs> yeah, okay, yeah. So I, as I was playing in on normal mode, I kept thinking, dude, if the game's gonna be like this, I could have played on hard mode, no problem. <laughs> is what I was thinking. But you I'm probably I, could have. I bet if you did play hard mode, you would have been okay. It probably would have been a stiffer challenge for longer. But the early difficulty modes, and I guess in my perspective it's hard to gauge because i'm fairly experienced with the game but i always found it to be like trivial so i guess that's true Mm. for probably most most players um you probably could have played on hard mode but uh they should they should have put in there though that like it's uh it's for people who are familiar with the game or something along that lines they shouldn't have put you need to already have good equipment that's what they put in there that I that told me okay I can't play that one. That's way to so, you from doing it, right? Yeah, I and mean, that's fair. Um, but <clears> I guess let's let's um, I'll circle back to some of the mechanics in a minute. But let's go to well, I want to say after uh, hearing all that stuff you talked about uh, the, the fact that it's entirely online and then how much you got into it and all that, it just cements uh, this idea in my mind that this game actually was indeed intended to just be an online play with your friends type of game. And not really meant to be enjoyed as a single player RPG. Would you that say that? That was kind of the. Definitely, there was a lot of emphasis put on multiplayer. Uh, you could play this solo and have a perfectly fine time, which was part of the controversy on PC as to why there was no option to play offline. Mm. And they made it out to be well, it's to prevent people from cheating. Because when you take the game offline, especially on PC, you... uh, You can do all kinds of things with it, yeah. Yeah, you expose the game to a lot more vulnerability. So one of the things that kept Diablo from being hackable is that you're streaming in most of those game assets. They don't live on your computer. So they're not there for you to modify and give yourself unlimited whatevers. Yeah. Um, Which people did a lot on Diablo 2, but Diablo 2 was... (laughs) you know, multiplayer in the earliest possible sense of the word. But even if, <laughs> you know, but even if you did cheat and overpower yourself somehow, you can't What's kill other people in that game, can you? Correct. So, so there's the care, limited, really. sure, but I think it's the, well, I guess that'll get, oh, you know what? We'll circle back to that. Cause that's part okay. of what I want to talk about last. Um, right. <clears throat> The next part I want to transition into is what did you think about? I know you talked about uh, the the aesthetic of the world is not to your taste. Did you look at the lore or listen to the what the NPCs <laughs> said? Yeah, um, I in the beginning I noticed that there was a lot of uh, optional dialogue uh, next to sure. over there's everyone's lot, head. Yeah. There's like an asterisk um, right. if they have additional dialogue. That's not mm-hmm. required, but uh, you know it's optional. And I thought that was a, n- a nice little uh, visual piece of feedback to let us know that you don't have to talk to them if you don't want to. But at the beginning, I was talking to everybody about everything just because I was curious. And I thought it was solid, for sure. Um, you know, you watch the opening scene, and I'm like, okay, whoa, this freaking demon's going to crush this girl or something. I can't remember exactly now. And I was happy to see that. I- at first, I thought that that was just a... A, like going to be two totally unrelated people to what I'm going to do. It was like just like a hundred years ago, the demon was released kind of thing. But actually you meet mm. that person specifically, the both of those people specifically 
that you saw in the opening cinema. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. So all this stuff was important to some degree. Um, and as I, you know, I listened to all the audio logs and one thing that I have to praise, there's lots, you know, to be honest, I say that the freaking, the difficulty thing of normal mode, I consider that a massive, massive, like a fatal flaw even considering I literally only had to hold X to win is the level that it came <laughs> to. But it, aside from that one really, really large thing, all the little things are unbelievably solid, like the, the right way, done the right way. I have this, mm. ma- this list of, on, uh, of all my little observations on this paper, and nearly all of them are positive, and then there's just like the one massive negative weighing on it that it's just too easy on normal mode. It's too easy. Um, right. Yeah, maybe if I had played it on hard mode, it would have been fine. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I listened to um, those audio logs, and I loved the fact that, one, you pick them up, it adjusts the volume of the background music and the volume right. of the voice, so you can hear the voice perfectly. Also, it gives you experience points just to listen to it. Also, it can continue playing the audio even across loading screens. And I was like, dude, these guys made every <laughs> correct decision when making this game. Um you know, mm. all the little things anyway. So yeah, I was listening to those and I kind of just viewed it as uh, as just, I want to say just a good excuse. I mean, that's kind right. of a, a derogative. Doing. That's kind of a derogative term, but yeah, a good excuse to, you know, go and kill all these demons. Because in the end, it's just like, we got to kill, I already forgot the name of the first demon, whatever the first, the, the lady, the lady demon. You have to kill the first uh... the lady demon lady demon and then you kill her and it's like okay then we got to kill asmodan i'm like okay asmodan must be the final boss yeah, uh-huh. killed him yeah, no no no. Yeah. then the one that's actually called diablo is the final boss okay yeah. now you got to kill diablo so you know it was cool <laughs> i was fine with it so, yeah so <laughs> i was kind of curious because i thought the story was really kind of cool around the edges like the look of it for me i thought was really cool i was really into it but all the details I never could really get uh, invested in very much. Um, oh, the human details I had you the mean? One, the, the, the plot details. The story you know, details, like yeah, yeah. The, the what and the why never really grabbed me as much as just looking at the game and what it was doing and being like, oh, this is some cool shit going on here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I said the, I didn't the like the... thing that comes to mind mm. for me is the the, the angels. These oh, like yeah, that's ridiculously... Right badass looking angels <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I said that the aesthetic of those uh, characters didn't appeal to me at all but uh i did like the look of a lot of the dungeons though sure and yeah. yeah i was, I was on board for i was on board for the the heaven area as well yeah that part got me i really i, I don't know something about this like really <laughs> like kind of badass looking templar night, mm. magic angel yeah. thing I was like, wow, that's a hell of a look. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I give one shit about uh, what they were up about and what they were doing, but it was kind of cool to look at along the way to, you know, getting loot, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I guess I'm in roughly the same position as you regarding the story. Like in the beginning, I was trying to make sure, you know, I understand everything that I can. But over time, I was just like, you know, I, I, I just got to kill stuff, right? <laughs> and so I just focused on that and then. Um, I always watched every scene. I didn't skip any scenes, but at the beginning, I was searching every dungeon for things as well, um, trying to uh, fill out the edges and everything, uh, make sure I didn't miss anything. But uh, near the end, I was like, dude, I'm fine. I could just beeline it to whatever my next destination is, and I'm sure I'll be able to kill everything there. And so at the end, that's what I was doing. Right. Um, Yeah, I think we're on the same page. Do you have any remarks about the music at all? Did it stand out at all? Dude, I like stopped and tried to listen to it and like it did not <laughs> stand out to me at all. Um, yeah. uh, I can't even remember it now. Was it <laughs> was it orchestral or was it ambience type stuff? Was it I mean it melodic was... or ambience? Like I can't even remember it anymore, but I, I feel like it was mostly on kind of ambient noises. And, or, yeah, there would be more of a orchestral thing that would kick up during like boss fights and stuff like that. But for the most part, there were parts where no music, and there were parts with 
more, you know, low Subtle, key yeah, stuff. Low key. Yeah. You know, there was no <clears throat> there's there's town music, especially in Tristram, which is the first town, uh, because that's somewhat famous, like the It's Diablo. in the first Diablo, yeah. Yeah, and the the music for that, and then I I don't know if it's the same track that everyone really likes, or if that was in Diablo Two. If you're familiar with well, the I Tristram remember soundtrack, so I totally remember. Even though it's been years and years and years now, like I mm. seriously have not, I don't have the game anymore. Haven't played that game since I played it that one time way back when on PS One when I was in college. So like, uh-huh. and I'm like forty now, right? So. But I can totally remember the Tristram town music from Diablo yeah. 1 and really liking it. You step out of the dungeon and this freaking really loud acoustic guitar is like, brum, yes. brum, yep. and it just it struck me a lot. But no music in this game struck me at all. Uh, yeah. I w- yeah. I don't know. It doesn't pop out. It's not particularly melodic overall, at least. I didn't, if, if there were some, a few you know, one hit wonders or whatever in there mixed in there. And I missed them. I'm sorry (laughs) to the composer. Uh, but yeah, it didn't really stand out to me at all. Uh, all I heard was the sound of my bow being drawn over and over again. (laughs) Pretty much. much. Uh, the, yeah, I, I was more feeling around to see if you had the same ideas about the story and the music that I did. And I'm not surprised to find you do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Mostly, I guess we're roughly of the same. Yeah, opinion in that case, in those areas. Yeah, um, and you know, unless you have any more to say about like the story or the world or um, the characters, or the characters, uh, just I thought that Deckard Kane's voice is hilarious. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's like, hey. He's a very, like, played-up old man. Oh, like, oh, the most played-up old man, yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. it was amazing. So, <laughs> did you recognize that him... Uh, well, I, we're talking about the whole plot of the game, such as it is, so if you care about spoilers, uh, whatever. Right. Uh, did you recognize that him dying was sort of a big deal? I had assumed when it happened that it must have been a big deal to all the hardcore Diablo fans out there. Okay. It wasn't a big deal to me. I was like, whoa, Dickard Kane died. <laughs> okay. Because yeah. he is famous, I remember right? back at the time. Yeah, he is. He's like the famous character. And like, I don't name one other character besides Diablo in Diablo. And I don't know that very many people could. Right. So, <laughs> right. They killed off the other <laughs> nameable character. The other one. <laughs> the other one. Uh, aside from the titular final boss character yeah um and at the time i remember that being a big deal when i played it um mm. uh, because people were like what the fuck they killed decker kane oh my god so uh, i guess he's not gonna be in diablo 4 huh <laughs> i would be a little surprised if he wasn't in some form it's a, right. like they have probably to bring him somehow, back somehow right yeah he'll become like a ghost who knows? Or maybe it'll be a prequel or something. <laughs> or something. Yeah, who knows? I don't even know what the next Diablo is really going to be. Like, we'll see. But yeah. that kind of, that, uh, unless you have anything else to talk about, that does transition me back to uh, the mechanics because we did talk about like the online component. Right. Okay, game. so before we go into that, I guess I do want to uh, go ahead and praise the you know, not in, it's not in my type, but the overall aesthetic is pretty impressive, I would say. Um, I, I definitely do not care for the way the characters look, but it's just my opinion. I don't think they actually look sure. uh, objectively bad in any way or anything. But I actually do like uh, a lot of the... I don't know what the word to describe this is, but in a lot of dungeons, you might be looking at some gray walls, and occasionally there'll be a very outstanding blue light on them or something, and sure. that contrast... Uh, you know, here and there stand, stood out to me and looked pretty pretty cool, I thought. And also, you know, it's like their original take on just hell in general, um, which I thought was you know, a pretty... I don't know. Sure. I, I mean, if you're into that, it's, it, it's got to be a pretty fun thing to see all these demons uh, being, you know, drawn in this way for people who are into that. So, mm. yeah, overall, I was impressed by the art. But yeah, just uh, not my favorite... Look, I like bouncy anime girls. You know me. <laughs> yeah, something a little more bubbly and a little less dour. You know, I'm yeah. sure would have been 
more my you know, type, yeah. <laughs> which is funny. Are you familiar with the uh, such thing as controversy with the game being too colorful? Are you serious? I mean, it is yeah. pretty in some areas, but people wanted it to be more gray, huh? People were upset. So uh, among the n- other, which we'll get to, controversies around the game's launch and the early development of the game, one of them was that the game looks too colorful to be a Diablo game. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I played Diablo 1, I seriously didn't even think about this game. I mean, back then it probably wasn't uh, maybe intended to be that way. It just it, hap- it turned out after it became so famous with Diablo 2 that maybe that's when they decided, yeah, this is going to be the, the series that shows you hell. And we're going to animate right. all these demons and just show you what hell looks like in these games. But in the first one, I didn't get that, that impression at all. I was just like, you know, it's just you got to get the better loot is the whole point of the game. Not the whole right. point of it is to show you all these scary things with awesome animations. But then when I saw like whatever, I think it was Diablo 4 trailer or something, you know, they show somebody running and uh, they like the blood goes into like the cross or something. I'm just going off memory here. But like, you know, it seems like, OK, yeah, they're going for the whole hell aesthetic really hardcore mm-hmm. with this series um so i guess it makes sense that there are some people who thought that diablo 3 looked too bright <laughs> yeah there was a particular area in act one where you cross a bridge and there is a rainbow like off in the distance Oh, okay. Like a very subtle a rainbowing effect because there is a, a waterfall that would probably create a rainbow effect in they real didn't life. didn't like that. That was too happy for and, them, huh? A lot of people screenshot at that and were like, what the fuck is this? I see. <laughs> As a response to this, or this was like before the game came out, this this uh right, this controversy yeah. all over the all over the place. <clears throat> and as a response to that, there is a secret level in the game that you probably didn't find because it's kind of hard to find Mm. without knowing how to find it where you unlock what is like a rainbow like level colored rainbow colored level oh man full of teddy bears and presents (gasps) and unicorns and i want to find that level (laughs) that's hilarious you have to look up online how to to get to it because i don't even remember anymore but um, yeah, it's an unlockable, and the uh, the series is known for its kind of really goofy secret levels. There's a cow level in Diablo Two, right? That, uh, <laughs> I heard about that one. Cows that say moo, and like a dude's voice going moo, oh. and <laughs> I'm sure Diablo One had something I don't recall. Hmm. But uh, yeah, this was the. Uh, the joke area of the game and it had a name i don't remember what it's called but it's like a rainbow area genius and the <laughs> there are pretty fucking hard and it was their little sort of thumb in the eye of people who were like this is too colorful and they're like well here you go <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of like three um uh controversies with this game uh, there were a few others the other one we There's talked several, about right? a little bit was always online the, was one right was online which people were obviously for the reasons you said they want to play this game offline the series is old and so people are probably looking to play the game the way they had before which is like you know what if i'm on an airplane i'm on my laptop i just want to play this game now i can't do that nope Was was diablo 2 an online game also you could play it online but Hmm. it's not easy to do was it more but, famous just as a offline game then? Yes, because okay. most games would have been back then. Oh, I guess so. It's yeah, like the mid to late nineties. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, Diablo three, you know, the the online was it was easy to sort of roll this controversy into. Well, this is just here for the benefit of the auction houses. Now, are you uh, familiar with what those are? You pay real money to get weapons, right? Right. Now, yeah. there were two auction houses, which they took offline, like they disabled them after a while. Mm. Was um, 
you could pay in-game currency, the gold that you earn. That sounds way better to me. To get, right, to post things to an auction house and yeah. then uh, sell them or buy them. And you would bid on them. Right. And not just, <clears throat> but you could also pay a buy it now price to skip bidding, or you could actually go into a bid war. And there was a real money auction house where you could pay actual fucking money for weapons right. in Diablo. Yeah. Now, to my knowledge, none of my friends, maybe one of them did once, but to my knowledge, none of my friends have paid any real money in those auction houses. But they sure did do the in-game auction house quite a bit. I did a little bit, but it was never fun. I never wanted to play Diablo 3, the auction house video game. You know, <laughs> having to get into a bid war with someone was not my idea of fun. The prices on these, on the really good items were just ridiculous. You had to grind out so much currency. Uh. And the real thing that people were rightfully suspicious of is all the in-game drops suck. Because they're trying oh. to incentivize you to pay potentially real money in the auction house to get <sighs> the cool, good loot. And once they took off, they shut down the auction houses a couple a year or two in after release. There was a noticeable uptick in the quality of loot. And they you update. saw you got quite a few legendaries just playing on normal once. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so have happened before. that sounds like mystery solved to me. They did do that so that people, to incentivize people to go use the auction houses then. Yeah, I think mm. that's very safe to say mm. uh, that they <clears throat> did this. And, you know, to be uh, slightly fair, but not to say it's totally not true, loot in games that are very loot dependent tend to start off really stingy and then because they're afraid of wrecking the balance or having people beat the game too early or whatever. Yeah. And then games will often sort of become more generous with the loot as people complain or they realize <laughs> it doesn't need to be so stingy. That's a common trend, whether there's an in-game way to buy the loot or not. But this was really egregious, I think. It was mm. really hard to get good loot. And the loot that was on offer wasn't even that good. Like, it wasn't interesting loot. The numbers were just higher. And it wouldn't be until much later versions of the game where legendary items had really cool effects on your skills or your character mm. that really incentivized you to get them. And there were also a, a large increase in the number of different legendaries that you had. So basically, if you were a barbarian, which is the you know melee tank class, yeah, you weren't trying to get the one set of loot that was worth getting. There were many different sets that you could go for that were good. Um, the game improved a lot, and they removed some mechanics that were not fun. So the early launch of this game was pretty dogged by some bad gameplay decisions too huh. uh one of them being invulnerable enemies one of the affixes Whoa. that these could uh come with you know they would have affixes which are special abilities that they have yeah and sometimes they would launch like fireballs or they'd shoot these little purple orbs at you hmm. or whatever one of them was invulnerable minions <laughs> you just couldn't kill them you couldn't kill the minions so you had to kill like the main guy and then they would die yeah not about as hard and obnoxious as it sounds <laughs> i guess so but i mean whatever it's uh i mean there's a person that is really one of them hard. is vulnerable so as long as you kill that one that's the strategy right sure but when you're relying on killing things to survive because either you get life when you kill stuff or just having enemies around you is too lethal to deal with, then them being involved. Like what we ended up doing was, all right, you go and draw aggro on the invulnerable minions, run around in a Tighten circle mm. while, yeah, while the other two members do the real damage on the enemy. I've had to do that a couple times back then. And that's one of the enemy types they removed. 
Mm-hmm. The other one that they removed is a uh, mechanic they removed is something called an Rage Timer, where when you fight an enemy, an elite enemy, after a certain amount of time, they enrage and do a ridiculously large amount of damage. Basically, the idea was you have to beat these enemies fairly quickly or you're not at the right level for this difficulty that you're trying to play on, so we're just going to kill you. Well, if the, but the enemy's really like hmm. enraged and then do crazy damage. Well, if you think about it in that way, then, I mean... It just it that means it actually gave you a chance to kill enemies that you weren't even supposed to be killing at the time. I would say, like I would say, that's better because the op the, 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 sure. right because the alternative, if if the whole point of it is as you say, you're not really supposed to be here yet. That's what this means. Then the alternative is they just block you from going there or something, right? <laughs> sure, I guess uh, right, and that's one of the things they refined. So instead of using enrage, they had torment levels which were not part of the original game. Mm. Uh, they had, I forget what it's called now, or what it was called, but there were like monster levels or something, and uh, it worked differently at the end game level where the game was like super duper hard. And it was much harder than it is now uh, for various reasons, including one of them just being the loot was bad. <laughs> it was hard <laughs> to get good loot. It was also hard to determine what was good loot because the stats were totally different. One of the major differences Mm. of this game was you had core stats that you had to look at and do some light math, like mental math on to determine if it was an upgrade or not. Now, when you have an, an item, a new item, it just shows you, yes, this is an upgrade. No, it's not. Which I is see. great. Like that's not a bad thing. Yeah, but I, think I remember before they're, they're, having to like mm-hmm. look at loot and go like, "Is this better than what?" Uh, what? And mm-hmm. that totally obnoxious process. <laughs> yeah. Um. One thing that I want to say would make that a lot easier is if they could keep the numbers down because the scale gets really high. Um, it does. I think by the the end of just normal mode, I had like ten thousand either armor or attack. I can't remember which one. So. Sure. That's crazy, right? Or maybe it's just one thousand. But like, it, I feel like the the numbers are getting kind of crazy. Um, well, really high is just what I mean. Um, and so you know, the higher the numbers get, the harder it is to like calculate whether something is a, a stronger or weaker. But they do this crazy thing for you. Um, at least I think that's uh, it's doing what I think it's doing. You know, you you might get draw uh, find a weapon that is a little bit lower attack than what you currently have, but then it says like. Plus, plus five percent to critical hit chance, and even though the attack is less, it still says it shows like there's an up green arrow pointing up to say it's better. Yeah, I think this yeah. game is actually freaking taking in all possible yes, damage ta- damage uh, that can be done and calculating what the DPS is on average and comparing them that way, which is yes. a great, amazing thing. I think. Yeah, that's one of the improvements they made where you would have to previously look at all of those things in aggregate yeah. and go like, okay, the attack is lower, but the crit is higher. And crit's really good. It's one of the best stats you can look at, and so is attack speed. And so mm. I remember having to ask one of my other friends who was like, played the game a lot more than I did, and they'd be like, hey, these gloves, are these like good gloves? And he'd be like, yeah, no, yeah, those are really good. You should wear those. <laughs> I'm like, this is dumb. Why am I asking someone who's played this game a lot? I should be able to tell for my damn self if they're good gloves. And mm. that's one of the things they did was there's like a baseline like summary stat, like damage, defense, yeah, whatever. Yes, yes. And that goes <clears throat> up if the evaluation on all the underlying stats are better. Yeah. Like the, in, in the whatever. Yeah, on average, sort of, yeah. Correct. And there are, you can re roll the individual stats on uh, a, a piece of armor or a weapon to do specific, you know, if you have like something stupid like attack on hit, you can roll that into crit chance, which is a really great stat to have, mm. or crit damage or something, and uh, make it just like a really good piece of armor or whatever. Um, 
and that was that was something else they added on a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, this game went under a lot of intensive changes. I think it's actually goes down in my opinion as one of the best recoveries of a game. Oh yeah, because mm-hmm. it really was pretty disappointing <laughs> out the gate uh. Uh, for a number of reasons, and they took down the auction houses. They rehabilitated the loot system. Before, when you played this game, you could get loot for a class you weren't even playing. Oh. <laughs> like, what the fuck's the point? Yeah. So they got rid of that. They got rid of these, like, other things around the edges, like uh, 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 weapon... Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, Degradation? No, that's in there. No, that's in there. <laughs> they made that better, too. But there was... Um, like uh like your weapon could be like poison type or or light type or dark type totally useless and they got rid of that <laughs> well what well, uh, it, it didn't do anything the type thing it was supposed to add that type of damn element yeah it was supposed to add that element to your attack but it didn't? but they changed it hmm. in a way that it just well i mean later on there are weapons that do this type of thing but it was never prominent enough in the damage calculus it was totally something you could ignore so they got I rid see. of it yeah you well, know it wasn't good, yeah. part of what, what was making the loot interesting <clears throat> to to go after it was kind of a vestigial thing mm. um they also reworked the way the skills change now in the console version this might work slightly differently but in the pc version originally yeah you could uh respec on the fly whenever um, let me think. Like, let's say you're running around remember. out in the battlefield. You uh. could hot swap your skills in and out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you can do that, yes. That's right. You say respect. Right. That's right. Yeah, you don't have to spend points in this game for anything, so it's not really respecting. But, yeah, you can totally just switch the attack of any button to one of the other attacks that are available for that button at Initially, any time. Initially, they stopped you from doing that. Oh. They wanted you to go back to the town to, to do, do it. that. And then you could go out. But what they did was they let you swap it out, and there'd be like a brief cooldown that would have to tick over, and then you could use that skill. Mm-hmm. And that was another good adjustment they made, where it's like, why are we stopping players from doing this? They want to do it. Who cares? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of concessions were made in that vein. Uh, well, I I would say they were they were freaking uh, uh, successful overall because uh, you know if this uh, list of just almost entirely praises that I have here, which I'll read once you once we finish our you know, talk here, we can probably go into it after this part. Right, right. I think I have. It. Yeah, I'm looking at you know considering that I'd say I guess they've done a good job with their rebalancing. Uh, finally, at the end. Yeah, I, I think they really did listen to the community. The game was really struggling, I, at least the perception of it was. And this is one of their marquee titles, Blizzard. This, this came about right around when Blizzard was uh, bought by Activision. So the company was under a lot of scrutiny. It'd be like, oh, this is an Activision decision, isn't it? You know. Mm. So there was a lot of heat on them. Uh, it was also slightly before a lot of the senior staff left. Toward the end of development of Diablo 3, they did leave. Just almost all of them, the writers, the developers, all of the senior Blizzard staff kind of bailed. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, people were drawing comparisons between this and what happened with BioWare. Ah, yeah. And, EA. and like, here's another really legendary Western role-playing game company bought up by a big publisher and turned to shit. Right. And I think the same is probably true of Blizzard to a different extent, and it took a lot longer than Bioware. But Diablo 4, you know, I'm kind of looking at it like Sagamai, like Sagai, like, are they going to, mm. <laughs> what are they going to do here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, ah, I don't have all the faith in the world, I'll say. Mm. Uh, but I, I do feel like someone somewhere in that company was like, no, we got to get this right we got we can't leave diablo 3 in this condition you know and they released a series of expansions that were premium paid expansions they added 
two character classes to the game and uh they actually were supposed to add another one and another act that got canceled, but um, uh, they did do a lot of work that they probably didn't have to do uh, to rehabilitate the game. It probably sold as much as it was going to sell off the bat. It was a very big, popular mm-hmm. launch. A lot of people bought it. The, and again, the online requirement meant that their servers were crashing on launch day, it was almost impossible to play this game oh. on the first couple of days of release. Because it was, it really was always online. <laughs> it was always online, and in order to play online, you had to authenticate through their server. Yeah. And there were queue times. Before then, actually, you couldn't even authenticate because their authentication server was overloaded, so it would just boot you out. Oh, man. Once you got in, you were good. But if your game crashed or you had to sign out, or if you were idle for too long, the game would sign you out mm. <laughs> and put you back in the lobby of like the main menu for the game, and you'd have to authenticate again. And those authentication servers were what got bogged down, and later on they enacted a queue timer, like it was a fucking MMO or something, to <laughs> get into this game, which you were probably just trying to play single player. Right. <laughs> Terrible. So yeah, that did go over well. Yeah. That's the reason I gave up playing uh uh what's that free game that came from China recently? Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact, yeah. Yeah. And it it's like totally my type of visuals and I played the intro, the beginning of it once, and I'm like, Yeah, this is pretty nice. You know, I love cruising through this really, really beautiful uh anime aesthetic, blue sky, green grass, blue ocean freaking world with my cute little anime girls. Um but uh you know every time i go on there it's like it's it has to check that you're online first before you go on on it even though it's i'm playing it as an offline game that drives me crazy Ugh. and just because of that yeah. like, you know what never mind i don't feel like it this is annoying <laughs> even though once i get in the game that doesn't matter anymore just the fact that it has to check that before i can press start annoyed me enough yeah. to not play it anymore <laughs> Right. And then you can imagine that all the people who swallowed the pill of, well, it has to be online to prevent cheating, were then, you know, had to eat their own hats because they turned around and made it offline for the console versions. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. that probably didn't help. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Should I go through uh, my list now or you want to? Yeah, I think saying? we're good. Hmm. I think I think we kind of touched on a little bit of the history and then sort of uh, our collective thoughts on the game. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. What do you got? Yeah, so I just took all these notes as I was playing, just every small uh, um, uh, observation that I noticed. So just in order from top to bottom, number one, don't like the aesthetic. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> just my personal opinion. Uh, character classes feel a bit confusing at first glance because I had no idea what they were telling me about. You have these two resources. One refills up quickly and one uh, refills up slowly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this this class beats people by doing this, 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 this. And it's like, man, it's a lot of information. I'm not sure how I'm going to choose. In the end, I chose just by looks and, uh, and the fact that I just like archers. So I went with that. Um. In the very beginning area, there's a dude pulling bodies out of a cart and throwing them into a fire. I thought that was a nice touch. <laughs> it's cool because like he goes in there and like the cart is covered, so you don't have to worry about the animation of like the yeah. number of bodies inside there. He can pull out infinite of them, which he does. And then he throws it on this pile of burning bodies and it just disintegrates into the fire because it's being burnt. And he could just do that right. forever. And I'm like, dude, this is genius. Who wrote this animation right here? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> um, the camera angle is sweet, I wrote. And I'm pretty sure I wrote that because it's pretty far away. I really mm. am annoyed by games that make you stay too close to the character. I like to see all around. Agreed. The volume sliders move in denominations of 10. Nice. Um, I, I like that because... Uh, I, I guess because if you, you know, you're, it's less granular control you can't set the volume to 78 or anything well, right yeah, uh-huh. but uh man how annoying is it with a controller you know i don't have a mouse right oh, so sure i guess this is just a thing for the uh, console version so it's a good Probably. choice 
you know, to to move the volume, and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like all the way up to hundred. Like, oh my god, it's gonna take forever. <laughs> so it moves in increments of ten. So I liked that. Um, Leah's journal plays an audio file and gives you experience. I like that because yes. it made the exp- it made that bit of exploration of going into the house and finding it worthwhile. Like beyond right. just beyond just the fact that you can listen to it, you also get experience. Amazing, I thought. The loading in this game is super fast everywhere throughout. Yeah. It's great. Very true. Hmm. You get to meet the girl in the opening cinema and help her find her uncle. And I like that because I had originally assumed the opening cinema was just like people a long time ago unrelated or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Tristram Cathedral. And I'm sure there are more places like this Tristram Cathedral thing, but I only really notice it here. The Tristram Cathedral is seamless so like you walk up to it there's the front door you open the door and then you walk in and just the walls and the roof become transparent and it doesn't have to load or anything and it's the right shape for uh the right size for that character and everything i was like dude that was so professionally crafted is the word this was a triple a game they put a lot of effort into the little details like that uh around the edges for sure well, all those little things, though, I, I feel like um, the single-A games should be doing, too, though, because those aren't the things that cost a lot of money. They just cost you noticing them. <laughs> I, uh, I guess in a, in a way they do, because so much of the production of a game is trying to get the bigger picture things right, and then it's all these like fine pass, like second-pass, third-pass things that you just don't have the time or the budget or the man hours for. Uh that probably a bigger budget like this does like when you have a big team of artists and a big team of renderers and a big team of whatever you can you know put all that into making it really polished and one of the things that you know polish quote unquote in a game is like how does it feel when you hit an enemy do you feel does it feel like hollow do you feel like you're getting any kind of feedback does it feel like you're just waving a sword around or you feel like you hit the enemy is there and there's a lot of work behind the scenes that i probably couldn't describe very well even as the player uh what goes into that and you yeah. know it when you feel it it's that kind of thing right yeah when you play you know when you play dark souls and you hit the guy with the with the two-handed r2 button yeah <laughs> something like that yeah that felt good <laughs> and compared to when you play a game that we talked about on the channel uh code vein you don't get that feedback the uh, same way i see it's just it, it feels more like waving a big sword around than it does in other games mm, i see yeah i guess yeah i guess you're right maybe that all is stuff that comes with uh triple a budgets maybe um you can see yourself through object objects so for example if you walk behind a pillar then you're behind the pillar but you can see your outline through the right. pillar another thing that they had time to do and i like that <laughs> um i want to kill every enemy with chandeliers so i liked the whole trap <laughs> thing um yeah. in the beginning definitely uh I, I was constantly thinking about is there going to be a trap that i can that i can use and kill the most number of enemies as possible with uh because mm-hmm. i yeah i was really into that but uh once you become extremely powerful then you stop caring about that unfortunately true true the character detail screen is freaking great shows dps with all variables considered armor shows the exact amount of damage you are mitigating awesome mm-hmm. deckard's kane voice deckard kane's voice is genius <laughs> i wrote that <laughs> <laughs> his voice is so over the top the shopping is sweet right off the bat yeah in the beginning it's very sweet uh, it becomes less sweet as True. you become more powerful, though. Again, at least I suppose on, so. On normal mode, yeah. Yeah, uh, towards the end of it, when you start getting up in like the later difficulties, you're you're never buying anything. In fact, you're probably never even doing anything with those vendors. You might sell a few things, but gold in the end of the game, uh, post auction house. Once they remove the auction houses. Mm. Totally useless. Like oh, gold. really? <laughs> yeah, mm. you just have no need for it. It's a. They try to make it 
somewhat relevant by having durability on your weapons. You gotta repair them. Yeah. But and it costs gold. But and no, it's you, yeah, you really it, don't. It was basically a non-issue. Uh, the the item de- degradation thing, like you know, it goes down and down and down, and then eventually I just go back and fix it, and like there was no yep. problem. It it, you, it never broke permanently or, or anything, right? right? You can always fix it, right? Yeah, and you could just all you have to do is go up to the blacksmith, hit one button, you repair everything, and you're done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so, like, what am I? Why am I doing this? <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of games, you know. Arm. Oh, I was gonna say, you know, Dragon's Crown has that, and it's e- equally pointless. But actually, the item degradation, fixing it is indeed instant. So it seems like, well, why am I doing this? But no, um, item degradation uh, matters for the number of stages you can clear in. Uh, without returning back to town, and in that game, because mm. in case you didn't know, that game is a lot like Diablo. Um, it's just it's beat 'em up instead of just press right. the button to win. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, in that game, if you go to the next stage without returning to town, you get a bonus to gold or the the quality of treasures or experience points gotcha. in the next one, and it goes up, 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 up more and more with every uh, consecutive stage that you complete without going back. And one thing that might be a thing, like you might be having no problem getting through the battles, uh, getting through the levels without dying much or anything. But if your if your equipment's about to break, then you then you have to go back and fix it, right? So, yeah. So I guess right. they, I guess you could say Dragon's Crown did item degradation better. <laughs> yeah. Um, where am I? The shopping sweet off the bat. They oh yeah. The dudes, the vendors buy back at the same price that you sold it to them. Nice. Yeah, um, that's the oopsie button. That's the what? Oopsie, I sold. <laughs> that's the oops button. Right, the oops button, yeah. You that's accidentally fine. sold something, you can buy it back. Yeah. You're like, oops. <laughs> the buyback menu is separate from the normal sale inventory. I think that's good. Yeah. Uh, there is a star next to any newly acquired equipment in the menu. I think that's amazing. They did not have to do that, and they totally did. Att- <laughs> attacks lock on, and the lock on is easily vid- visible. Positive. The fog of war regenerates sometimes. I don't like that. I put a minus for that. Why- Occasionally, when I go back to a previously visited area, the fog of war was back, and I have to unlock it again if I want to see the whole area. I don't know why that is. I don't like that, though. Yeah, the- so what's happening in this game, if you recall... Diablo one is it's it's a randomized map. But so, once you enter it, it's not it stays as it was. Sometimes if you re reload the area, it re randomizes. But okay. not so much every time that you can tell. It's one of my it's one of the earlier disappointments of the game that they never really addressed is Diablo two the maps were quite randomized. Like, mm. it really, within, with some exception, to all the maps were pretty random. And the same is true of um, of Diablo 3, but it's way more rigid. Like, uh, having, in my hours, and granted, I played a lot of Diablo 3, I almost always knew where to go, because it's like, oh, it's this map. You know? Uh. Or, oh, it's like this... And the exit's going to be somewhere over here or something. With you know, some maps were more randomized or just so big, you couldn't do it with, like that with. But the tile sets that they that the game would use to render the randomness were pretty limited, like almost to the point where it's like, why are they bothering? I'm I not see. Even sure. I don't think Diablo One uh, would randomize anything after you cleared it, because if I'm going off the memory mm-hmm. correctly. You'd go into them and, you know, I guess they're randomly generated. And then you'd kill all the skeletons in there and stuff. And when you pass through there um, on uh, later, I'm pretty sure the whole thing is uncovered still. And all the skeletons are still lie on the ground where they were slain by you. Like, it keeps that saved, if I remember correctly. <laughs> that might be true. I haven't actually played Diablo 1. I played Diablo 2 for uh, enough to know. Hmm. The the game. It's uh, you know something we didn't really touch on is that Diablo three. The we we mentioned respecking, but for the points for your characters like abilities, 
um, not the abilities, the stats, yeah, uh, such as they are in Diablo three, you can freely reass- reassign those. It's like you're not locked into almost anything at any time, right? Um, and in Diablo two and and one, I'm pretty sure you were pretty much locked in. Ah. <laughs> uh. And the stats that you were picking were more, way more granular. Like you were picking individual points. I can't even for... remember, yeah, what exactly, like, like assigning points to anything in Diablo One. I only remember the equipment grind. Yeah, in Diablo Two, for sure, you were picking like HP and dexterity and this and this and this little points that you mm. were upgrading with every level. And once you locked those in. I believe there was a respect mechanic that was probably fairly expensive, but there was no way to freely reassign those choices. Um, And that they did away with, I think, a smart move in Diablo 3. But uh, I guess we've kind of gotten to this point. I'll mention it at the end, but uh, the obvious sort of successor to Diablo 3 is actually Path of Exile. What? Which is a game that... Why? Why is that? That's not made by Blizzard, is it? It's not, but it's the game where everyone moved over to. Whoever was like a hardcore Diablo 3 or Diablo 2 player is now playing Path of Exile. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. And so the friends of mine who put all those hours in Diablo 3, they're playing Path of Exile. Like, to this day, they're still playing. Oh, man. Game. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, tons of equipment slots. That was a positive because, you know, it's a freaking yes. loot game. There should be lots of things to get then. So that was mm-hmm. cool. Um, throwing stars go down to the correct elevation. This was on freaking mind blow to me, dude. If you're standing <laughs> on top of a staircase and a bunch of dudes are um, are down at the bottom of the staircase, what normally happens when you throw your throwing stars as the uh, hunter? Was she a hunter? Was that the class? I, I want to say that was the name you're of the class. Probably correct. <laughs> I, maybe. Anyway, I if, refuse to look her up at this point. <laughs> anyway, if you're playing that archer character and you use her throwing star ability, it just goes out into the crowd straight ahead of you, right? But if you throw it and if you throw it out, it always it goes it follows down the stairs. And if it's gonna go upstairs, it'll go upstairs too, dude. Like it just stays at the right. correct elevation to hit all the enemies that would be in your path if the ground was flat. Freaking genius. I can't believe they did that. Yeah. Dude. That's amazing. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, lots of destructible items in the environment. I like that. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Totally. And you get bonuses for destro- you get speed bonus for destroying them. Yeah, so- you do. So there's actually a way to like take advantage of that yeah. once you really get rolling in this game. You can break a bunch of shit. Uh early faster. on, it's funny, before they patched it out, there was a early area that you could grind throughout the game that had just a shit ton of pots everywhere. It was like one of the underground crypts where there's just like little pots and breakable shit everywhere. Mm. And early on in the game, you can, because loot can, usually it's money that drops out of those things, but loot can drop out like a little weapon or whatever. And they shared the same loot table originally as monsters, just way lower Mm. So if you ran lower percentage or lower lower power percentage percentage of coming out okay yeah all the loot whatever the loot table was like X percent to drop regular X percent to drop legendary they could drop legendaries and there were tons of pots. What people would do is they would just (laughs) yeah people would just go in from A to B in this one little area that had a shit ton of pots in it, just break all the pots and then reset the room and break them all. (laughs) Genius. (laughs) And they they actually patched out that the pots can't drop legendaries anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Getting up getting a legendary from a freaking Pot would be amazing. <laughs> I got my first legendary was in a tree stump. Oh whoa! <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. The L one potion is infinite. I thought this was a very interesting mechanic to mm. change because in the original Diablo, you had I think it was the L button was for life, which makes sense because it's the L button, and the R one <laughs> was for mana potions. Yeah. And uh, you could you what you had Finite to do is. Potions. Yeah, you had to go back and buy them, and you ran out of potions. You ran out. But the thing was, yeah. dude, one, 
you instantly consume them upon pressing the button. Two, your dude never gets tired of drinking them. And three, you don't have to <laughs> yeah. like stop fighting to do it e- either. So like yeah. back then, I was like, are you serious? It's an insta heal. That's crazy, right? And uh, but somehow, at least going off memory, somehow they pulled it off in Diablo One, where they can overwhelm you faster than you can be ready heal. to press lots of healing potions, right? But yeah, yeah. you could buy as many as you want, or as many as you can hold. Anyway, there was a oh, limit. Yeah. But so now they've done this really interesting thing where now that post can be used infinitely, but you don't you don't have to buy more or anything. Instead, you just have to wait for the cooldown timer mm. to finish. So it's like a one-time save from a dangerous situation that you, you're not going to die and you can go back and, uh, I guess, uh, go back to town if you think you're in trouble. I only pushed it like three times in the whole game in my, in my ex- <laughs> experience. And... Uh, one of the times was an accident. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah. They changed that <clears throat> midway through um, this game where you did have finite numbers of uh, bottles that you could equip. Hmm. And they they did rework that. There were also scrolls, like teleport scrolls and identify scrolls in the older Diablo games that you had to buy and carry. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, portal yeah. town portal is now also mm-hmm. infinite. Huh? That, I think it's that's infinite, better for sure. And there's no more scroll of identify, which is silly. Like I don't know why they did that, but but then uh, now I kind of feel like, do we even really need to identify? Th- I guess just to make you think that it's going to be an amazing thing. Special, yeah. They they yeah. made a comment on that. Like, why are we still having you identify things if there's no mechanic to it? And they're right. like, it's you just, just the fun. Button. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, yeah, it's fun. It's like it, it, unwrapping a present. Indeed, yeah. It, it's not a, a flaw for sure. You can't say it's objectively a flaw, but uh, yeah. um, yeah. I just thought it was weird that like I can just freaking identify this. Like really, like anytime. Yeah. Just hit the square button were, and it works. Okay. <laughs> were you um? There's a tome of identify all in the <laughs> in the town. I don't know if it's there in the campaign normally. Okay. What but, happens if you get that? Well, it's it's no, it's just a fixture of the towns. Every town has this. Uh, I think it's supposed to be like Deckard King's like tome or whatever okay. the fuck. Yeah. And you go up to it, and it just identifies any unidentified items in your inventory, all at once. Like, boop, oh, if goes. you have a lot of them or something, yeah. Yeah, because toward the end, that's all you're picking up are oh, yellows and legendaries. So you would be like boop, boop, boop like uh, all it would take forever. <laughs> yeah. Right. I see what you're saying. Okay, and now I'm at the point where I'm, like, noticing. Um, oh, wait, wait. So, yeah, the potion, what do you think of that? Do you think it's better now that you don't hold a certain, a finite amount now? What do you think about that? I do. I, I think they balanced it out pretty well for that cooldown function. The uh, Diablo 2, like you were saying, and Diablo 1, mm. uh, it was, like, the harder difficulties were kind of contingent on you spamming the potion button to overheal past whatever crazy damage you were taking. So you're constantly still <laughs> you're spamming your attack and your heal at the same yeah. time. <laughs> That's how a lot of people would play the harder difficulties in Diablo 2. Uh, one of my other friends who played Diablo 2 way more than like my friends who played Diablo 3 mm. um, told me like, yeah, no, was like when you were playing this game with really harder difficulties, you were just slamming on that potion button, whatever you had it bound to. And then just like playing the game. I'm like, that's silly. <laughs> if you're mm-hmm. getting to that point, the mechanic is clearly like, broken down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think you might be right. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I thought I, when I first noticed it and the one time I, the first time I used, it, I was like, Oh, Whoa, this is interesting. And I think I prefer, for it maybe to holding I, I don't know I mean there is some amount of uh, immersion uh, increase when you have to go buy them and hold them uh, but I don't know uh, as I always say like this game is a little bit too fast and too easy uh, to really count on like the, the potion thing to be an immersion breaker or an immersion creator for this mm. one at least not at least on normal mode yeah on normal yeah yeah Okay, so now I'm at the point. I I wrote this down. I'm way too powerful. Literally hold X to win is what it said. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, so one of the reasons that that is in this game. So they, I at first I thought, is this a thing that's uh, specific to my character class or something? But I, I, from talking to you, it sounds like all classes have this freaking automatic healing over time like regeneration is a main thing in this game for all characters passive not necessarily but usually yeah there is a passive health yeah. regen stat that your character probably does have yeah. just from mm-hmm. armor that you're wearing or whatever yeah like nearly every piece of equipment either um gave me auto, uh gave me plus HP every second or plus HP with every hit or plus HP with every kill. Uh And so I want to say that is the reason that the game is too easy is I'm like, nothing can, nothing can, (laughs) can hit me faster than I can uh, regenerate it. And uh, one thing, there was one weapon, I think it was a legendary that I ended up just go ahead and uh, selling that, uh, that I got that I ended up not using because it wasn't as crazy powerful as the one that I was using. And I didn't really need any more healing. But, like, I kept getting, like, plus a couple hundred HP per second or per hit. And then I got one weapon that was, like, plus 2,000 per second or something. And I'm like, Jesus yep. Christ, man. But because yep. I, I didn't need it, I didn't need to sacrifice my damage to, to use that one. I just went ahead and sold it. But I was blown away just seeing the number. <laughs> like Jesus. Yeah. So and there's so, a lot of crazy numbers. Right. And so it's because of that mechanic specifically that I want to say, at least on normal mode, that the game has no strategy. There's no like like I guess when you get to the harder harder modes, are you supposed to actually run around and try to avoid the attacks? Is that what you're supposed to do? You can't just oh, yeah. spam attack and destroy everybody? No. Okay, yeah. So that, that's, no way. Yeah. That's, so, that's yeah, a problem with normal mode, actually, I guess. Uh, you have to actually avoid... If there's any... Especially if there's like a static like thing that an enemy places on the ground that does damage, whether it's the molten stuff or the... Dude, I just stood beams. inside of those. <laughs> yeah, no way. It, yeah. You would get evaporated. Like, to, unless you were a tank class, because that's how I played. I would be a tank class that did like probably no damage... And my entire job for my teammates was to stun and group together enemies while I mm. just took a lot of aggro and damage I see. from them. And early on, that was really effective. But later on, as the game was patched and whatever, basically every class turned into a damage dealing class. There were no tanks anymore. Uh. It wasn't necessary to do any of that. And the game overall got much easier. So the idea of someone having to be there to like stun and disable enemies and take all the damage just became irrelevant. So in my opinion, that's when I got a little disappointed (laughs) Mm -hmm. because I love tanks. I'm always, if I'm, there's a game with a tank in it, I always love to try and be the tank. I see. Um, But yeah, so that unless you were doing that where you had like crazy health regen or defense against certain things no yeah on the hardest difficulties you have to avoid most attacks i would say Mm -hmm. okay yeah i think uh i think maybe i would i would actually i could see myself going back picking up this game again to go play on hard mode next oh and continue down the line i just yeah i don't really feel like trying to make a party and play with people because i don't know any people besides you and maybe one other person but i mean right i'm not going to be able to align our schedules or whatever to play games not while i have kids right so i would like to be able to do to get um i mean if i were going to do this i don't plan to but if i if i i could see myself if having the time wanting to get the full diablo 3 experience by going down all these other um harder difficulty routes uh but i want to do a completely single player offline everything and uh you could maybe it can yeah maybe it can yeah i'm sure you could i'm sure you could play this game offline single player i mean a lot of my friends even back when we were playing this our schedules didn't always line up so we were often playing parts of it solo um not necessarily together but uh yeah i mean if you ever had if you're ever so inclined to to circle back on it and, and give it a look You'd probably find, I don't know where the difficulty would actually step up, I don't recall, and I'm sure the console version is 
a bit different. Uh, so the point at which you would be like, this is actually hard now. I'm not sure where that would happen. You might have to go up a few difficulties. Yeah, maybe I'll go uh, ahead and like not and just skip the next one and see how hard it is when I enter the next one. Right. Yeah. If you want <laughs> just to to like test the waters, just go as high as again let you go at that point and just see. All right, what happens? You know, am I gonna get fucking deleted by these enemies or what? <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm not sure. Depending on how hard the game lets you get off the gate off the bat. Mm -hmm. But you beat the campaign, so it should let you go up a, a little bit by this point. I well, I think I could I could choose several different modes mm -hmm. right off the bat. I think like I don't think they were locking me out from them, which I appreciate. Right. I hate when JRPGs are the worst <laughs> offenders here that you can't play True. hard mode before beating normal mode. <sighs> yeah. Oh, and to answer your question earlier, there's that seasonal uh, yeah mode. Basically, what that is is the adventure mode, but there are seasons. So what that is is between, uh, I think they last a, a month or two, or just one month probably. So it, for the span of a month or so, uh, there will be special content of some sort that you can get by doing everything in that season whether it's a uh, special legendary with special stats, special looking armor, uh, profile banner. Usually they're on the cosmetic side of things and not significant gameplay wise. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that they're, they're there to get you back on that treadmill of like loot grind when you've already grinded out all the best loot. I see. <laughs> like they're really ultra end game. Like really are looking for a reason, an excuse to play the game. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. I think the main thing that's preventing me from going back to this game, although I think I will just check out like a couple difficulties down from where I am, just because I'm curious. But I think the main thing that's preventing me from uh going ahead and playing through a whole another difficulty uh mode is that. You know, despite the fact this is one of those, uh, it's, it's a grind game, which is like right up my alley. Despite that, mm -hmm. I like Dragon's Crown a lot more than Diablo 3. Because um, it's kind of the same thing, but it's just, it's a beat em up and it's got the aesthetic that I like. I love the crazy art style and all that. Sure. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm really, really into Dragon's Crown. And just in case you're interested, what that game does at the end, that the way that game does is it has normal mode and. The balance of normal mode in that game, it's not like super easy like this one is right at the beginning. Um, but the way they've set it up is that you're going to get a lot of benefit from leveling up. And the max level in normal mode is 35. And you're going to get a lot of benefit from getting up to level 35 and getting... You don't, and you don't have to worry about like S rank treasure or anything like that. You just get some pretty good treasure for your level and... Mm. Uh, you, you'll be a lot more powerful and a lot more difficult to kill. But you still, but in the beginning, before you can get to the to that, you're going to have to try learn to avoid some attacks at the beginning. Um, otherwise, the going is going to be very slow. And but that's fine, because you could just take it as the going, the going is slow, and you slowly get the grind up. But then you go into hard mode, and the amount that you can feel safe from level ups and equipment goes down quite a bit and then you go into hard mode where the max level is 99 and it's like you just gotta play good now yo i mean you're gonna also mm. want the levels and the equipment but you gotta just avoid stuff yo um because mm -hmm. it's a beat-em-up game now it's a beat-em-up game now with just a little bit of extra assistance from equipment and levels and then mm. after you beat hard mode you unlock a no an infinite i believe it's infinite like i don't think anybody's gotten to the end of it um, an infinite tower of uh, randomly hmm. randomly generated stages. I think I read on a game FAQ somewhere that the farthest anyone ever has ever gotten was like five thousand or fifty thousand or something. <laughs> I can't remember, but thousands, thousands. So <laughs> wow, yeah, crazy. So yeah, I'm really into Dragon's Crown, and I'm trying to get good with the sorceress now. I'm I'm pretty good with the elf already, so I, so I want to try being better with the sorceress, and she's way harder to be good with for me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, I recommend it. But anyway, getting I'm ne I'm near the end of my list here. Um, a positive: very few interruptions throughout the game. You can move during many of the scenes. Oh yeah! Thank God for that, man. 
Um, the <laughs> Act 3 FMV is epic. Positive. Yes, it is. People have lots of optional dialogue. Positive. Although, during the second half of the game, I, didn't, I chose not to read it. I think it's cool that they put it there. And I, that they put right. it optional. And even that they put a sign that this person has uh, optional dialogue, so you can notice it, too. Like, mm-hmm. all those things are just solid design choices. Um, Asmodan is a crab, mon- crab monster. I think that's cool. Yes, it is. The war going on outside the castle, when you're like, when there's like a war going on outside the castle, looks cool. <laughs> uh, equipment names are awesome. I wish I could remember some of them now, but yeah, a lot of the equipment had really cool names. <laughs> yeah, it's usually like uh, Bludgeoner of the Owl, or like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There are all kinds of cool <laughs> names. I wish I could, yeah, there I don't know why I can't remember any now, but... Uh, Oh, I think I had a crossbow called Demon Machine or something. Oh, if it's like legendary, they do have special names that aren't like uh, random generator names that are really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, equipment names are awesome. You can play audio files across loading screens. That blew my mind. Mm. And uh, <laughs> the only time that there's like a deficiency in like performance from the game, like loading and stuff, the only time... I, it's it's like the only other minus besides the easy, normal mode being too easy is the ending credits. Like, it's so weird, dude. Freaking, huh. when you get to like the special thanks section where it's just like a million names in one area, it's like the, the names are scrolling up <laughs> and then there's like, a there's like it looks like it's the last name. But then like more names just like pop up. Like there's pop in, not with environment assets when you're walking, but with names as they're scrolling by. What? Huh. <laughs> that's so weird. Too many credits. Too many credits. The game can't handle it. And that's all oh my, my freaking God. notes on freaking Diablo 3. <laughs> that's a funny last one. I don't recall. I'm not sure I've ever sat through the credits um, all the way. <laughs> in my case, uh, I was looking for a name because I know a person who works at blizzard i don't remember if he was there during diablo three days or not but he might have been so i was looking for it but there were so many names and i got tired and i never found it so either i I missed it uh, i would imagine that some capacity this person must have been because diablo 3 entered development in like 2001 okay yeah then (laughs) what are you when did it come out when did it come out like 2011 11 Oh, that's right. It came out like the same year as Dragon's Crown. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere around there. Yeah, so that's all I got to say about Diablo 3. Overall, pretty solid. I just wish that the normal mode was better balanced. Yeah, it should have been. It sounds like uh, they probably played it too safe. Like It sounds to me when doing that is like an attempt to accommodate really novice players yeah i guess so don't want to do anything i guess <laughs> like why yeah. are you playing a game at that point mm. but uh you know that's what easy mode should be for if you really want like a pushover experience you know go ahead play on easy or something but uh yeah it's that's kind of silly it doesn't feel like it's normal no, it didn't you know? feel like normal at all. It felt very it, it, in the very beginning. It felt normal because I did have to go back out of a couple areas, but mm. pretty soon, like I just kept getting more and more healing equipment that would heal me faster than enemies could hit me. And yeah, before I, I knew it, I was just like <sighs> invincible. Like, what's up with all this <laughs> HP regeneration? I thought, but you, yeah, it sounds like that's a normal thing for all of the classes in the game. Yeah, on on normal difficulty for sure. Uh, it's just it's it's yeah, it's a bit of a shame. But well, I think we kind of touched on everything I had on my notes here. Let me just give it a quick glance. Yeah, I did. Cool. So unless you have anything else, I think we'll wrap it up. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. So thank you all for listening to episode twenty one. 21 uh, turn-based memories uh we have our next episode already uh, picked out or at least i do which i suppose yeah, I, I will reveal it's going to be new to me too i want to hear it too yo. yeah you haven't All told right. me yet. so i have not but i was pondering over some of the options on our list of games for me to play next now we just did final fantasy 8 
uh, mm. for me. And on the short list of games that uh, Zoltan has picked out for me, the one that stood out the most honestly for right now is Final Fantasy Tactics. I oh, know we man. just came off of a Final Fantasy game, but yeah. this is a different one, though. This is not another mainline uh, standard action or uh, JRPG uh, game. This is a tactics game. So uh, I know is that next to nothing. Is that your choice? Is it FF Tactics? Yes. Yes, it will be. Awesome. Dude, you're going to love uh, it. <laughs> I have a feeling that I probably will. Um, I... What was it? I played... There's a there's a one that came out after this, right? That Tactics wasn't Advanced? Maybe? That one came out. I mean, yeah. How many the of them one. are there? I think that's it's the just the three, right? Just Tactics, Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced for the Game Boy Advance. And I believe there's also Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced 2, I think. And I think okay. that's all. And then, of course, the like same a... person has also made uh, the Ogre Battle series, which is right. a similar type of game. And it's the same guy, uh, Yasumi Matsuno. Okay, so this is the original Final Fantasy Tactics, correct? That's, the, the one that's right. It's on PlayStation okay. 1. It's like Yasumi mm -hmm. Matsuno's first game that made him famous, I would say. Right, <laughs> yeah. I think this all well. We, we'll definitely get into it on the episode, but yeah, I think this had a pretty big impact on like tactics games, right? In, yeah, I always say the same thing. Every tactics game that came out since gets compared to FF Tactics. Mm, so right, mm. interesting. And this is before the big, r relatively recent resurgence of Fire Emblem games. That's right. Yeah, way before. Because that was you yeah, mean the the most recent one is the resurgence, right? Uh the DS ones, the ones that came out on the DS, the Fire Emblem Awakening or whatever it was called, oh, okay. uh, maybe five years or so ago on yeah, the DS, DS was like supposed hmm. to be the last one, and then they're like, "Oh shit, it sold like crazy." <laughs> guess we're making another one. <laughs> guess we're making a shit ton more. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, because I mean, we're talking PS One. I think it was even hmm. early PS One. I don't. I think it came out after FF7, because FF7 was very early PS1, but still pretty sure. early from going off memory. I'll check when this we actually... This would have been before a U.S. release of Fire Emblem. What was the Fire first Emblem. thing that Fire Emblem came out on in America? 2003 or 2004 in the Game Boy Advance, something like that. Game Boy Advance? Mm, okay. Yeah. It wasn't out. Uh, it was in Japan and very popular before then. Up yeah. until the NES, you know, it was an old, old series. But Tactics would have been... 1990-something, probably. Yeah, right. Predating the U.S. Uh, release of Fire Emblem, which is maybe now one of the more broadly known Tactics role-playing games out of Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see. I'm sure I'll love it, but we'll get into the details. Like I said, I know... Next to nothing uh, about even like other than it being a grid based game, I know almost nothing about the combat or like the the details of the combat. You know, I, I can glean some ideas of it's a tactics game, right? So I could probably make some assumptions here and there about stuff. Right. But uh, story wise, I don't know anything. You know anything about it? Uh, mm. Nope. I don't know anything about it. Uh, whether it's like good or bad story, I don't know. And then uh, I don't really know much about, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, story, combat, whatever. It's, it's a pretty blank slate other than the, 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 the very basics. So I'm looking forward to it uh, quite cool. a bit. Mm. And unless you got anything else to say, I think we'll just uh, call it for now. Yeah, I just got to say, I'm looking forward to you playing Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, that would be great. So yeah, uh, we'll also be reevaluating the last uh, episode. We did a multi-part format. That's right. Not this episode, but the previous episode, because it was a longer game, and we were doing that format. Not sure yet if we're going to do the same. We may do. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I guess depending on when uh, we post Final Fantasy VIII. You know, mm. and if you hear this one <laughs> in between, uh, <laughs> let us know what your thoughts are. 
if you think the format works or you want one or the other or whatever, we'll take a look at your comments and see how we feel. Definitely. Uh, but yes, stay tuned for that. And uh, that leaves me to say like and subscribe, God damn it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Everyone's saying it again these days. Yeah. No, no, no. And, the thing uh, that everybody says these days, I know, I totally noticed. The thing you're supposed to say now is, you know, I noticed that uh, all 60%, my viewers are not subscribers. So, sixty yeah, percent exactly. of the viewers uh, watching this channel are not subscribed, and I, I'd really love to change that. <laughs> yeah, here's here's this animation of a finger clicking on the subscribe button. Yeah, in case you didn't know how to do oh, it. <laughs> I don't know what memo. Yeah, I don't know what memo every YouTuber got where they all said they have to do this. Somebody like finds I mean, out these not... things. Yeah, and when somebody figures out, everyone's like, okay, that's what we got to do for the algorithm. It's so. Uh, it's, bizarre it's like a hmm. script it's, it is reading. a script like, where yeah. is this coming from? <laughs> where is it coming from yeah <laughs> all right i don't know anyway uh thank you all like and subscribe tell your friends thank you sultan thank you mel thank you everyone have a good night good night